Hi, I'm Rob Cosin. Welcome to my shop. Hand painting wood, squaring the ends of the board. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. One using a shooting board and one using a block plane. And even when I'm using power tools, I still do this. So stay tuned and I'll help you get better. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you whenever we release a new video. Anytime we use a new tool or technique, we'll leave a description down below so that make it easier for you to find. All right, let's get back to work. This is the piece of wood that we've been working on. It's a piece of red oak, and if you haven't seen the videos that have got us to this point, check them out down here so you can get caught up. What we're going to do, and just as a quick reference, we've got our face flat, we've got our edge square, we've got the opposite edge square and parallel to this one. Now it's a matter of getting this brown down to length. We're going to start by using a shooting board. I'm going to use a five and a half on the shooting board to get this end square. I'll walk you through that process. Then I'm going to show you how, if you can't bring your board to the shooting board, how you can do it with just a block plane and go through a process of checking with your square to get it just as good. However, you're going to find out how important a shooting board is to accurate work. Stay tuned. I'd like to make sure my shooting board doesn't move. So sometimes I'll clamp it or at least have a bench dog right here so that I can kind of lean this way and it doesn't slide. Now, if you haven't um, watched our video on making a shooting board, you can check that one in the description below and that'll walk you through the process of how to do this. But in I may have the opinion that the shooting board is, is probably the second most essential tool to hand to a woodworking next to a hand plane. Speaking of which, I'm gonna use my five and a half, which I find to be the best suited for both using in the shooting board and general purpose on the bench. It saves you having to have a second plane. Now the first thing I wanna do is make sure that that blade is parallel to the sole. So I'm going to sight down the sole I'll advance the blade so I can easily see it. it just shows up as a thin black line. Uh, mess with my lateral adjustment until I get it what it appears to be parallel. And then I'm going to retract it. You can wax the sides of your... Where is my wax? You can wax the sides or side that's going to run along the shooting board and also the sole. Now, one thing you need to note is that when we're squaring up this end, we want to make sure that we have a reliable edge against the fence and a flat face against the shooting board. We have yet to dimension this piece, so the only piece I can trust is here. I can trust both edges because those have already been done and checked. So the idea is, with the shooting board, is keep the board tight to the, to the uh, top of the, sh pardon me, keep the board tight to the shooting board, keep the board tight to the fence, the action of the plane will actually do that, and then you've got to be feeding the board into the plane. You want to make sure that you don't tip your plane. A lot of folks, when they first start, have a tendency to want to lean that plane in to meet the board. What you want is to keep this standing plumb. You want to keep it tight to your, the side of your fence, and you feed the wood into the plane. However, you can't push the wood harder than you're pushing the plane in the opposite direction so that you maintain that square setup. But the first thing we have to note is these fibers right here, characteristic of wood, if left unattended to, when we plane across the end of this board, these fibers will break out. And some folks say, well, why don't we just bring the fence of the shooting board right out to the plane? That's fine the first time, but sooner or later you're going to take a heavier cut. That's going to take more of this off, and then you go back to a light cut and you no longer have that support right at the edge. So it's always better to cut a little chamfer first. Now to do that accurately, I've got to flip the board over. I'm going to pull it away from the fence over here on this side, and I'm just going to take a couple of passes. I'm going to bring a little more blade into play. Take a couple of passes. You can just barely see it right here. Now, make sure there's no debris in there. When I turn it around and put this against the plane, you can see a little gap right here. That's the chamfer I just cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to plane along here and you have to stop just before that disappears. If you go too far, you negate what it was doing for you and your fibers tear. And if you stop too far back, you're not going to have 
a nice straight edge, you're going to have that gap right out at the end. So don't make it too big. So in doing this, I hold my plane hand right here over the widest part of the plane. Just kind of force part of this muscle or meat on your palm into this wedge-shaped area. Keeping it so it's standing plumb. Don't lean it one way or the other, as I mentioned. Keep the board tight. And on planing something like oak, it's good to get a bit of a run at it. Now let's check that. Okay, that's good and square. I'm referencing off of the true edge. And if I go square this way, I shouldn't have to check this one. It should be automatic because my shooting board is. All right, that one's done. It would be so easy to flip it around and do the other side, but we have to see both ways of doing it because there will be times when you cannot bring your board to the shooting board and you've got to be able to do this by hand. So the next thing I'm going to walk you through is measure this the length we need. We're going to cut it off with the panel saw and then we're going to use a block plane in the vise and we'll walk you through how to do that. Our next move is to cut this to length. And by the way, I use the shooting board regardless of whether or not I'm using power tools. Even on a table saw, you may get it perfectly square, but you're always going to have mill marks. So I always either start with one side already square, cut it to length, and, but leave enough so that I can get rid of those mill marks. Now, I'm going to measure this off at 22 inches. And we'll just square a line. Now I'm going to cut from the top side. So on the bottom side, with a hand saw, you're going to get some tear out, particularly on oak. So what I'm going to do, and this isn't a bad idea, I'm going to knife that line so that it'll stop those that tearing right there. Now I'm not going to cut right to it, I'm going to cut on this side a little bit, but if tearing is really bad, those fibers are going to come back this way and then you're not going to be able to use that face of the board anywhere you'd see it. So over here to the saw bench, I'm using a uh, Lee Nielsen panel saw for cross cutting and you want to cut this as close as the line as you trust with your sawing. Use your thumb to get it started. Remember the turtle won the race. Use all of the blade, or as much of it as you can. And when you get to the end, especially if it's a longer piece, just reach over and support that so it doesn't fall off and take a big splinter with it. There was no danger with that little piece, but a larger piece would be. Okay. Now we've got to take that down to the line. If you look back here, you can see that none of these little uh, broken fibers went beyond that scribe line. So do that and it'll preserve your piece for you. All right, next thing we're going to do is get out our block plane and using the vise, we're going to go through the process of getting that right to that line. Now a block plane is sharpened almost exactly the same as our bench plane, with the exception is I do not feather those outside corners so I leave it straight across. When you're putting that in place, this one has an adjustable throat so I'm pulling that back so there's lots of room. Sometimes you can put your fingers right down in there like that and just kind of lay the edge on your fingers, carefully I might add. Get that in place, put the lever on. Now you want to sight down that sole and get that blade parallel to it. Now, what I like to do is just back that lever off a little bit. It makes it a little easier to make your adjustments. The throat really doesn't come into play in dealing with end grain, but I'm going to close it down just a little bit anyway, and then lock it. Now, I can see the blade, which means it's probably going to be more aggressive than I want. 
each time I make that adjustment, I just pop that up a little bit, hold it with my thumb so it stays in place. Wax this. I actually would typically use my bench plane on this and my, I'll, my, I'll demonstrate that to you as well. All right, so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to cut our chamfer on the back side. Not a bad idea to come in here and continue that scribe line that we did. For a point of reference. Now I'm gonna I'm going to kind of skew it and just So I, I'm, I'm going forward, but I'm skewing it just so if you try to do it this way, what happens is the corner falls into the throat. So by doing it on an angle like that, it's a little bit easier. And you remember, you want your chamfer to be more like this as opposed to like that. Now, chamfer works on the opposite side, so I'm going to spin that around. The first thing I want to do is I want to get this surface flat, not square, not not uh, square in either direction. I just want it to be flat first. Then we'll, I will adjust it from there. So on a block plane, I've got my thumb up here. I'm using my finger underneath as a fence to keep the board centered in the blade. I'm going to skew it a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to get started. Now that's a little more aggressive than I want, so I'm going to back that off a little bit more. Best to use your whole body on this instead of just sitting here and moving it with your arms. If you hold your arms in position and then just move forward with your torso, you'll find that you can power through that a lot easier and with a lot more control. Now you can see where we still have sawn area there. We've got a clean surface over here. So starting here, all the weight is on my front thumb holding that plane. Um, parallel to the end of the board. This hand is more or less just supporting the weight of the plane, but no downward pressure because you don't want it to tip. Once you feel the blade engage, then you just move forward, trying to keep the plane parallel to the edge. You get into this point and you're pushing down on a 45 with both hands. And as you get toward the opposite end, you got to bear down more with the back hand to prevent the plane from dropping off when the resistance stops as the blade leaves the wood. Now I still have a little area right here where you can see saw marks. All right, down. Let's take a look. Remember we have to make sure that we're gauging off of a reference edge, whether it be the face or the edge. And I like to hold it up to the light. I like to bring this, the uh, heavy part of the square in tight and then just slowly slide down until it makes contact. And this is showing to be high on this side. So I can do, this, do it the same way I've done it with my large plane, meaning I'm going to keep the blade, pardon me, the plane flush with this outside edge. This is high, this is low. Put an L on there. So I don't want to take anything off of here, but I've got to take this down to meet there. So by holding my plane like this, the blade stops an eighth of an inch shy of the edge. So I know I won't take off any of that outside edge. And it allows me to go through and just wear away the high edge. I've often wondered why the, uh, the um, most common reason held for a block plane is end grain work. It never made sense. It's the heaviest or the hardest cut of the entire board and yet it's the lightest plane. You do this with a heavier plane and it is so much easier. There is a balance issue you have to get used to. You know, we're still high. Now I'll look to see where my line is. I still got yeah, uh, 30 seconds of an inch, so I'm okay. Just to show you real quick, I'm going to bring this plane in. I would do the same thing, keep it flush with the outside, 
finger underneath holds it in place. That's a little too heavy of a cut. Watch your chamfer. You can't go too far. You'll be in trouble. I still have some there. If you get enough time in with your five and a half, you'll find that that'll be the plane that you reach for when you're doing just about anything, including this. Okay, so that is now square. However, I've got to take a couple of passes because there's, there's going to be that little ridge line right about there where the blade stops. So if you were to put a straight edge on it like this, it wouldn't be uh, on the same plane side to side. But we can fix that with a couple of passes. One more. All right, I still got a bit of chamfer, so I'm okay. Check my line back here. Okay, that's good and square. Now look at it this way. I can use the square on here, but I can also see my line. And what it's telling me is I've got more material up on this end than I do down on, on the opposite. So I've got to take a little bit of extra off. Now, if I was to try to do it this in this direction, I find it's going to be a little more difficult. And I've almost used up all of my little chamfer. So instead, I'm going to turn around like this. And I'm going to take my first pass. It's going to come to about here. My next pass will come to about here. Next pass come to about here. Next pass to about here. And then I'll stop and check it. And I'm, I'm saying that based on experience and how much it's out, based on how much I'm taking off each time. So there's one pass, two pass, three. Four. Now I haven't gone all the way to the end. Still need still high a little bit here. And if I look to find my knife line, it's telling me the same thing. I've still got more material on the side closest to me. So we'll do the same thing. We'll go to about here, and to about here, to about here. And before I go any further, I'm going to check that again. Okay, that looks good. Now, it's not, I've got to go all the way because I stopped here. That means that this is not going to be perfectly straight from there to there or flat, but it's really close. And if I look at my gauge line, I see about the same amount of gauge line left all the way. I'm going to cut a little chamfer here, a fairly shallow one, just by pulling the plane toward me. All right, that should be the last pass. We'll check for square this way. We look good that way. Now I'll look really close to see, and I don't have any of my gauge line left, so I should be exactly where I want. I'll check that, it should come out at 22 inches right on. All right, there you go. Remember, if you can use your shooting board, it's the most accurate and the fastest way to do it, but there's going to be times that you're not able to do it, so you have to be able to use a hand plane, literally by hand, in order to square up these boards. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now, I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.